so let's let's forget about Ruby and Elixir specifically and just talk about for a minute functional and object oriented. So and let's let's take the theoretical discussion out and look at it from a practical real world standpoint. What benefits do functional programming bring over object oriented programming? So, again, the one thing that's mentioned, and this is, again, it's more of the theoretical, but it constrains assignment. And what I mean by that is that there's no global state within the programs, really. Right. Meaning you just have pure functions and they get called. So it's very consistent. Whatever you put in the input, you're going to get the same output. The function doesn't mutate, doesn't change. So your results aren't going to change. Whereas if you have an object in an object oriented programming language, those have variables that could be said, they, there could be instance variables that get updated. Um, so that's the an opportunity to, to change state. Right now, which could lead to errors. I would say that there are certain cases where that's actually an advantage. And I've got one that I used in the past where I had to, for a web application, I had to write basically a conductor object that could coordinate states and information between a bunch of different things in real time using web sockets and stuff. Um, and if it hadn't been able to carry that mutated data to pass from one object to another when it got called to say, what is the current state overall, I would have had no way to do that. So in that case, functional programming would have actually been a detriment for me. Now, perhaps I could have figured out a way to do it in functional programming, but I couldn't have done, done it the way I did it with some kind of central conductor. Well, when you say something like a central conductor, I think of that would be a dedicated process you would spin up. Right, but it has to carry mutated state information to pass well, around to various objects and say this is the current state of the union. Well, and you would do that through processes. Hmm. So you would spin up a process and you could have a coordinator process that kind of knows or checks what the state of the other processes are. Right, but that but that coordinator process. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to digest this functional stuff. Yeah, I and... mean it it requires and again I, it's it's actually been a while since I've actually uh, done a lot of Elixir programming. I am running, again, a microservice in Elixir, and I go in there from time to time, but it's not something I'm doing on a daily basis. I'm mostly right. using the, the Ruby. So on the scenario where, yeah, it's a Rails monolith, but I actually have a Elixir or a Phoenix microservice doing a few things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'd have to step back because my brain keeps going back to how things work in object oriented and that's how it wants to think so i've got to i've got to have some time to kind of step back and say okay functional would do it this way um and again unfortunately i'm bringing back up elixir again as opposed to functional programming but presumably other languages have a means to maintain a state it's just not done through creating an object or global variables and things of that nature, because they just don't exist. Right. And, you know, I think, I think too, what we're talking about Elixir is one of the most, one of the most pure functional languages that you've had experience with. Um, but Ruby, you can do a lot of functional programming in Ruby. You don't have to use objects all the time with Ruby. So 
um, you know, if functional programming is something you want to look into, don't think that, oh gosh, I got to learn a whole new language. No, um, most languages you can do functional programming. It's a, it's a methodology, not a language. It's just that some languages like Elixir either enforce it better or make it easier yeah. to accomplish. Yeah. So. If you like this clip and want to watch another one, you can click right here. Or if you want to watch the full video, you can click here.